case. And the question that I hope the country asks themselves at the election is about the future, because that's what's at stake at a time that is more dangerous, is potentially more transformational than at any point that we've known in a long time. Who can you trust to have the bold ideas, to have the clear plan that will deliver a secure future for you? And you talk about track record, people can judge me on my track record since I've had this job. Right? Tackling a more pragmatic, hard-headed approach to net zero, ensuring that we have secured our economic recovery, as you and I were discussing last week, delivering tax cuts, making sure we're investing in the industries of the future, taking advantage of Brexit, growing our trade. These are all the things that we've done just in the last 18 months. And that brings me on to Natalie Elphick. And look, actually, more than anything, I think it shows less about her, and it's more about Keir Starmer. And it shows him to be completely and utterly unprincipled. Right? This is someone who went from embracing Jeremy Corbyn to embracing Natalie Elphick. It just tells you that you can't trust what the guy says. Right? And if you're trying to be everything to everyone, fundamentally, you don't stand for anything. And I think that will be increasingly clear to people. And on the substantive topic about illegal migration, which Labour have been trying to talk about, I mean, they announced that you were all there. They announced a, a plan last week, which, when I went through it, essentially is exactly the same plan that I announced that you all listened to a year ago, that we've already implemented, that's already making a difference, but they left out the most important part, which is that you've got to have a deterrent. That's the boldness that's required if you're going to deal with the insecurity that we face. Right? No amount of extra caseworkers are going to change that. Right? You've got to make it crystal clear that if you come to our country illegally, you won't be able to stay. That's what the National Crime Agency think. That's how we've solved illegal migration from Albania. Right? That's what you need. That's why the Rwanda scheme is so important. And he's been very clear right, that he ultimately is going to grant an amnesty for illegal migrants, which just allow thousands of them to enter here and to stay here. And as Natalie Elphick herself said in the not-too-distant past, Labour are an open borders, pro-immigration party that doesn't want to stop the boats. Her words, not mine. Uh, next, can I go to the BBC? Thank you, Chris Mason, BBC News. Uh, <coughs> let's cut to the quick here, Prime Minister. Are you saying the country would be less safe under Keir Starmer? And in summary, is this the beginning of an argument from you that says, be careful what you wish for, better the devil you know? In a word, yes, Chris. <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm, I'm very clear, right? My, my, I'm the Prime Minister of this country. I've been doing this job, and I've set out today that I believe that the next few years will be both the most dangerous that our country has experienced in a long time and also the most transformational. Now, you can disagree or agree with that, but I happen to think that's the truth. Everything that we're seeing in the world from today, from the last week, last few months, tells me that there's an incredibly dangerous time. And what the country needs, what the country wants, what the country deserves is to know that there's a secure future for them and their families ahead. That is the choice at the next election, and I'm also clear that my track record and the decisions that we're making in government show that we are the party that has the bold action, the clear plan to deliver that secure future. That's a debate that I'm looking forward to having. Uh, next, uh, Daily Mail. <coughs> Thanks, PM. Um, uh, you said you want to fight the uh, election campaign on the future, not the past. Does that mean that there'll be no place for Boris Johnson when it comes to the campaign? Yeah. I've been clear about this as well in the past, right? I, I want every Conservative who shares the vision that I do to be part of that campaign to, fa to fight for the things that we believe in. Now, ultimately, look, of course, the Conservative family is a broad church, but we're united by a set of values. And that set of values that I talked about earlier on are founded in an innate optimism about our country and what it can achieve, an intrinsic sense of pride in our history and our identity and an, a knowledge that actually progress comes from people, not from the state. And that's about creating the dynamic, innovative economy I talked about, seizing the opportunities of Brexit, recapturing what we had. We led the world in the Industrial Revolution. Right? That's what we did in this country. That was the most extraordinary time of change and progress for humanity and for British people. We led that. And I see no reason why we can't lead again in the future. And that vision that I pointed out and outlined of a more secure future for families, where we can have confidence in our strength, where we're protecting people from the threats we face when we're securing our borders, we have a pragmatic approach to net zero that's serious, that's hard-headed, that makes sure that we give everyone in our country financial security, that is a conservative message, and I'm confident everyone 
can get behind, and the choice of the next election is not between this Conservative and that Conservative. The choice of the next election is between me and Keir Starmer. It's between the Conservatives and Labour, but crucially, it's about the future versus the past, and we are the only party that is talking properly about the future and has a plan to deliver a secure future for our country. Uh, next, LBC. Hi, Natasha from LBC. Just to follow up on Chris's question, so are you saying today that you think that Keir Starmer would make this country more unsafe? Um, and on Ukraine, it was reported over the weekend that David Cameron persuaded Donald Trump to back more funding for Ukraine on the premise he could secure a peace deal. Can you uh, <coughs> assure us that the West is not about to force Ukraine into taking a peace deal? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I believe that we will keep this country safe, and Keir Starmer's actions demonstrate that he won't be able to do that. I, I believe this is the most dangerous time that we've faced for generations. That's why we've made the decision to increase defence spending to 2.5%. That's not an easy decision. Right, that is a decision that we've made. That's a choice that we've made. That's a priority that we think is right for the country. Keir Starmer and the Labour Party have been crystal clear that they don't believe in that. They will not match that choice. Right? So there's no way you can keep the country safe and secure from the growing threats we face. Iran, China, North Korea, Russia acting together. Unless you are prepared to invest in our defence. It's as simple as that. There's a very clear dividing line there, which I'm sure everyone can appreciate. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when it comes to this question, right, his track record will tell you that. And I don't say this for political point scoring, but that is just the reality of the situation. You, he's someone who believed Jeremy Corbyn would make a good prime minister of our country, not once, but twice. Right? Jeremy Corbyn wanted to pull us out of NATO, wanted to scrap the army. Multiple members of the the government that Labour would provide don't believe in a nuclear deterrent. So I don't see how you can, with a straight face, say to the country, yes, I'm prepared to do what it takes to keep you safe. The evidence just doesn't suggest that at all. And it's because of that increase in defence spending that I can stand here and provide more support to Ukraine. And not just that, can say that that support to Ukraine will be provided for as long as is necessary to repel Russian aggression. Keir Starmer can't stand here and make that pledge. And actually, Labour Party and Keir Starmer not matching our investment on defence spending emboldens our adversaries. What do you think Putin thinks when he sees that? That he thinks the West isn't prepared to make the tough choices to invest in their security? Because Russia's economy has mobilised for war. He's continuing to be aggressive. We need to meet that aggression with strength and allied strength. And not to comment on individual conversations,